Hey guys, today I'm reviewing the recently released Bode Linux version 4.4.0. Bode Linux is an enlightened Linux distribution. It is based on the Ubuntu LTS, so the Ubuntu long-term support release. It features the Moksha desktop. Moksha is based on the old Enlightenment window manager. Version 4.4.0 comes three months after the release of Bode 4.3.1. Uh, apparently they have a regular three month release cycle but you don't need to completely you know, reformat your hard drive and reinstall for those of you that are already running Bode 4.3.1. There is a uh, an update path to 4.4.0 uh, so no need to reinstall your operating system every three months. There, there's an upgrade process. Now the standard release of Bode Linux comes with you know their custom Moksha desktop environment, the Enlightened 17 based desktop environment that they uh, build in-house. But it doesn't have very many programs installed on it by default. I mean like five or six you know like actual programs installed other than the desktop environment itself. But they do offer what they call a app pack release. The app pack release is loaded down with a full suite of programs. And that's what I'm going to download and install and review today is the Bode Linux 4.4.0 app pack release. I'm going to install this inside VirtualBox. All right, so I've downloaded the ISO for Bode 4.4.0, the app pack release. And in our first menu here, we have the option of live legacy BIOS boot the live system so launching the live desktop environment we have uh, boot live in safe graphics mode we have a mem test we have check distro integrity we have HD which uh, boots the first hard disk we have HD VB boot first hard disk in virtual box I'm going to choose the very first option in, in the menu and we're just gonna go directly into the live desktop environment Okay, and I've been waiting for probably a minute or better for the live environment to, to load, and it finally is loaded. Uh, on these live desktop environments, on these ISOs, sometimes it can take quite a long time for the, the live environment to load. All right, and this is the Bode Linux live environment. This is their Moksha desktop. Now let's see if I can find an installer. All right, the installer is right here in this launcher on the bottom panel. All right, and it looks like they're using the standard uh, Ubuntu installer, which is called Ubiquity, which is a fantastic installation program, very simple to use. It has already chosen English. Click Continue. We have the options of downloading up updates while installing Bodhi. I'll tick that on. Install third-party software for our graphics uh, drivers, Wi-Fi drivers, Flash, MP3, multimedia codecs. Yes, you need to tick that on to get a proper you know desktop experience I'm gonna click continue alright partitioning I'm going to choose to erase disk and give Bode Linux the entire 15 gig hard drive of this virtual machine for those of you that need to do manual partitioning you need to go down here and choose something else I'm gonna click install now and it warns me that it's about to format the drive and I write to the disk click continue time zone it has chosen the central time zone in the US for me that's correct I click continue keyboard it has chosen English US that's correct we can test it out in this test field click continue I need to create a username I'm gonna call myself Bodhi here pick a username I'm just gonna use Bodhi for my full name and my username I need to give the Bodhi user a password Log in automatically. I'm not going to tick that on. I want to be asked for a password when I log in. Encrypt my home folder. I'm not going to bother encrypting my home folder either for this review. And click continue. And the install process starts. It'll probably take five to ten minutes for the install to complete. I'll be back. All right, so the installation completed. I rebooted the machine and very fast uh, Bode Linux loaded up uh, really before I even had time to start the video and get going uh, probably took about five seconds for it just to load us straight into the Moksha uh, desktop environment here now I have never played around with enlightenment 
the Enlightenment uh, Window Manager, uh, Enlightenment 16, or the new Enlightenment 17 that the Moksha desktop is based off of. It's an, uh, it is based off the old Enlightenment 17 Window Manager. So this will be a completely new experience for me running this desktop environment. I'm going to go through the menu and see what is installed by default on Bodhi Linux the app pack release. Remember the Bodhi Linux standard release has almost no software installed by default. It's designed to be very very minimal. You install what you want to install on it. But for a review, for a distro re review video, there's no point in me reviewing something that has nothing installed on it by default. So that's why I am reviewing the app pack release. So in the menu we go to applications. Under accessories we have ePad. I guess this is our text editor. Yeah, it looks like your standard text editor. ePad is a simple text editor written in elementary and Python. Alright, also under applications and accessories we have XFBurn, which is the standard uh, disk burning utility in the XFCE desktop environment. Under preferences we have AR&R, which is uh, for our displays for setting up our proper screen resolution. We have elementary configuration. All right, looks like uh, some configuration and theming stuff here. Uh, also under preferences, we have our network connections. We have Open JDK Java 8. We have printers. We have the Synaptic Package Manager. Let me go ahead and log into the Synaptic Package Manager. Oh, incorrect password. Try again. All right. An error occurred. DPKG was interrupted. You must manually run sudo dpkg dash dash configure dash a to correct the problem. You know what? I'm not going to bother with that. But you guys have seen Synaptic Package Manager. It's the standard package manager, graphical package manager that's available in a lot of Debian and Debian based distros and Ubuntu and Ubuntu based distros, of which Bodhi is in that line and it's based off of Ubuntu which of course is based off of Debian. Under programming we have Genie. Genie is another text editor but it's really a IDE. It's designed for programmers and this is uh, Genie 1.27 Reaser. Alright also under applications of education we have LibreOffice Math and Calculate. Calculate with a Q. Under games, we have Play on Linux and Steam, both installed by default here in the app pack release of Bodhi Linux. Under graphics, we have our document viewer. We have ePhoto, which I'm assuming is our photo manager. Yep. Looks pretty cool. Also under graphics, we have Image Magic, LibreOffice Draw, and Pinta. Load up Pinta here. Pinta version 1.6, standard uh, little graphical program, a paint program. Alright. Under Internet, Chromium is our web browser. HexChat, IRC client. Midori is another web browser. Midori is a really lightweight web browser. So you see a lot of these minimal distros like, you know, Bodhi Linux use Midori by default. Pretty cool uh, minimal web browser. Uh, but I, I suspect that 99% of you guys out there, even, even if you run something like Bodhi Linux, a minimal you know, uh, Linux distro, you're probably going to end up installing Firefox or Chromium anyway. But that's cool that they in, uh, include Midori on the ISO. I don't mind them doing that. Also under Internet, we have P Pigeon Instant Messenger, for those of you that do any kind of instant messaging. Although instant messaging really is pretty dead these days. Not too many people use instant messaging software anymore. Really with the rise of so social media, Facebook and such, uh, IM programs are really not necessary. We have Steam and Transmission BitTorrent client both under the internet, internet category. Sound and video. We have the OpenShot video editor. We have VLC, uh, our multimedia player. Great video player, VLC. We also have XF Burn again, again the standard disk burning utility in the XFCE desktop environment. Under Office we have our document viewer and then we have the entire LibreOffice suite. Base, Calc, Draw, Impress, Math, and Writer. Under System Tools we have the Bodhi App Center. 
and it looks like the Bodhi App Center basically just opens up a web browser. It's a web interface here, and I guess we can search for packages here on the web. So if I search for Firefox, you know, I get search results, Firefox. I can click Firefox. It has an install button here in the web browser. I click install. Of course, we have to give a root password. And okay, and the installer launches. So pretty easy, simple to use, user-friendly way to install software. All right, also under system tools, we have Bodhi Builder. Now, I'm not sure what Bodhi Builder is. It's asking for a root password, so it must be something to do with our system. All right, it looks like it's a backup utility. So for those of you familiar with other backup tools, such as you know the backup utilities in a Linux Mint, or what's the standard backup utility in Ubuntu, uh, Deja Dupe, which is a uh, GNOME backup utility. It looks very similar to those. All right, also under System Tools, we have ePulse. ePulse looks like it's our volume control. All right. Also under System Tools, we have eSudo. So I'm not sure what eSudo is. It looks like it's a uh, run command prompt. So let me close out that. And then we have our file manager, which is PC Man FM. A very nice, really lightweight, minimal file manager, PC Man FM. It's what I install on most of my lightweight installs. For example, when I uh, install anything running OpenBox or Fluxbox or uh, tiling window managers like Xmonad, I, I usually uh, install PC Man FM for a file manager. Really nice. We also have our system settings. I'm assuming this is going to be your, like your standard uh, control panel that you see in a lot of Linux distros. Where it actually has a search field. It has system settings for Light DM, which is our login manager, date and time, keyboard layout, startup applications. This is all the applications that launch on startup when you first launch the Moksha desktop environment. We have our system updater and we have terminology. Terminology is, of course, our terminal. While I have the terminal open, let's do a uname space dash r. All right, we're using 4.13.0-17. That is the Linux kernel, so pretty recent Linux kernel. All right, we also have a wine category under applications. Wine is a uh, Windows emulator. Well, it's not really an emulator, but it kind of is. It emulates Windows, so you can run Windows programs inside Linux. Not a lot of Linux distros install Wine by default because honestly, if you want to run Windows programs, why are you running Linux at all? Just run Windows. Or uh, install VirtualBox and install Windows in VirtualBox. That would be a lot easier than running Wine, to be honest. But they have Wine installed. All right, also under our uh, category here, under Applications, we have Places, which is, you know, our file manager. We have Quick Launcher. Quick Launcher is this little uh, quick launch utility here. Just a graphical way of launching programs. You know, you have these big icons here. We can sort them. You know, we can go through the menu here and choose, like, for example, preferences here. Anyway, uh, just left click anywhere on the desktop and that menu goes away. Also, in the menu, we have our take screenshot command for taking a screenshot of your desktop. We have about the operating system, so about Bodhi, about Moksha and about the theme resetting the Moksha desktop for after you make changes to the desktop. We also have settings again uh, links to our settings panel modes, gadgets, modules, shelves, theme and wallpaper. Let's see what wallpapers are installed by default on Bodhi 4.4.0 and it looks like we just have the one wallpaper here that we're using here. I don't see uh, option to change to anything else. I mean we have options of changing a directory to go find more wallpapers, but if other wallpapers are installed on here by default, I wouldn't know where to look for them. And finally, in the menu, we have our uh, sessions uh, lock, log out, suspend, hibernate, reboot, and power off. Now, this menu in the panel here, you can get this uh, menu to come up anywhere on the desktop. Uh, similar to window managers like OpenBox or Fluxbox where you right click on the desktop. In Enlightenment, you left click 
on the desktop. So left click anywhere on the desktop and that menu comes up. The same menu. Same as hitting the uh, icon here in the panel. Just anywhere on the desktop you'll always get your main menu to pop up here. Alright, the panel at the bottom has some customization. For example, we have uh, contents so we can uh, add, remove, you know, clipboard clock, settings, the everything starter, iBar, pager, places, pulse mixer, start, system, sysstray, and task. Also, we have the settings option, which uh, lets us change the uh, stacking, the position, and the size of the panel. We also have orientation, so right now it is set to the bottom of the page. I can click top and now the panel is at the top of the page. I can click uh, left and our panel is at the left side of the screen similar to the way Unity does it by default or a lot of people do the same thing in the Plasma desktop and the GNOME shell uh, desktops these days. Uh, I'm going to orient it back to the bottom. We have uh, two virtual desktops by default. I'm on one right now. Let me open up something to demonstrate this. So I'm going to open up the PC Man FM, our file manager again. I'm going to click the second desktop here on the panel. And we're on desktop two. I go back and click desktop one. We're back to desktop one. And let me see. If I right click on it, can I add more desktops? Let me move my head out of the way. Uh, pager is what this is. Settings. Pager settings. Uh, advanced maybe uh, I closed it by accident but it didn't look like I could add more virtual desktops at least through that uh, through that program I'm sure there's there's a way in the, the system settings to add more desktops should you need more than two let's talk about the release cycle of Bodhi again I mentioned that Bodhi 4.4.0 the current version I'm reviewing came out exactly uh, three months after the previous one 4.3.1 all right, it looks like the release model Bodhi is following. They call it a semi-rolling release cycle. They are basing Bodhi on Ubuntu's LTS. Even though they are uh, putting out new versions every three months, and the Ubuntu LTS releases are supported, I think, for like five years, if you want to run the Ubuntu LTS that long. Bodhi is updating every three months, but uh, it's... Uh, really minor point releases uh, you don't have to reinstall the operating system when you go to the next Bodhi unless that next version is on a newer version of the Ubuntu LTS if that makes any sense for example the current Ubuntu LTS is 1604 this Ubuntu or this Bodhi uh, version is based off 1604 so was the last one probably so will the next Bodhi Linux will be based on 1604 you don't have to reinstall the operating system to update to the next Bodhi on any of those but eventually 1804 Ubuntu 1804 LTS will come out that Bodhi uh, release you will have to reinstall the operating system for that one if that makes any sense so it's not really a rolling release honestly I wouldn't even call it a semi rolling release because really it's no different than the Ubuntu LTS uh, I mean the Ubuntu LTS for example has minor point releases every so often along the way you know to update the ISO so you're not you know downloading an ancient ISO you know two three four years down the road you know if you want to install something like Ubuntu 1604 so what is my verdict on Bode Linux having never run Bode Linux before uh, this time running it right now here inside a virtual machine and it was also my first time using their Moksha desktop environment uh, let's talk talk about the install the installer is the standard Ubuntu installer the ubiquity installer it always gets an A plus the easiest installer there is you click OK like three times ten minutes later you have an operating system installed your grandmother could run that installer uh, the distro itself based on the Ubuntu LTS so it should be rock solid stable very minimal the window manager here the enlightenment 17 based Moksha window manager very fast very lightweight very minimal the standard release of Bode Linux which I did not review 
Also, very, very minimal. It installs the desktop environment, but none of these extra programs. So everything under applications that I went through here, none of this is installed by default on the standard release of Bodhi. You install what you want to install. I love distros like that. You know, just give me, you know, a login manager and a window manager slash desktop environment to log into, then let me, you know, apt install whatever I want to install on the system. Uh, I also love that for those that want a pre-configured out-of-the-box desktop experience they do this app release what they call an app release uh, of Bode Linux where they give you a full suite of programs uh, I mean, it's not a complete kitchen sink kind of suite of programs but they have a little bit of everything in this app release and it's very light on system resources. I couldn't find a uh, system monitor installed by default. Maybe there was, but I couldn't find it in the menu. I'm going to sudo apt install htop. And it's giving me that same error I had when I tried to run Synaptic. Let me go ahead and fix that problem and run the command it's wanting me to run to, to solve that dpkg problem. All right, now I'll sudo apt install htop. And let me launch HTOP. All right. Now I gave this machine two cores of my six core CPU. It is using 2% of one of those cores and 0% of the other. Very, very low CPU usage. Memory, I gave it 5.7 gigs of RAM to use. It is using 203 megs. That is a very small memory footprint. So you guys with older machines, uh, machines you think will never run a modern desktop environment. There's no way you could run GNOME or KDE or Unity or anything like that. Enlightenment might be worth giving a try. Anyway, peace guys.